Thanksgiving is two weeks away. Is that not crazy? Like, where did 2023 go? Uh, yesterday, I was at my very first Friendsgiving of the year. Um, some people made fun of me, said it was way too early. Um, anybody agree? No. no, right? You can do it whenever. Um, I do want to say, um, and I've got a bunch of Friendsgivings uh, coming up. Uh, I do want to say that I absolutely hate turkey. Um, somebody says, you know, you haven't tried my turkey. Um, I'll probably hate it, but... Uh, you can make it if you want to. Um, I'm just like, why? Let's, let's do like food we like, like chicken parm and, and bone and ribeye steaks and, and pedneal, right? Like turkey. Ugh. Thanksgiving is the act of giving thanks. Thanksgiving is the act of giving thanks. Now, in this season, you, you start to get a little bit more mindful uh, what you're thankful for. Honestly, this should be an all-year-round thing, but, but coming up to Thanksgiving, we're always uh, more mindful of what we're thankful for. And when I think of all the things that I'm thankful for, of course, I think of my three beautiful daughters. I think of my family. I think of uh, friends. I, I think of God's purpose in my life and God's provision. I think of his church. I'm thankful for all of you. I'm, I'm thankful for his harvest season in our lives. I'm thankful for his abundant blessings. And, and I'm not just giving thanks for the thing that he... The thing that he's already done for me, man, I want to give thanks for the miracles that are on their way. I want to give thanks for the things that I'm praying about. I want to give thanks for the things that I'm expecting him to do. I want to give thanks, yeah, for the miracles that he's done in the past, but the miracles that he's preparing me for in the future. I want to be thankful. And I think about certain things, like um, I think about my house. My house uh, was a complete Miracle. I was renting in Bayside, and I had some, I had some friends of mine that uh, had come. They were from California, came to New York to visit, and, and they were asking some questions, and they said, hey, uh, between the two of us, we want to um, lend you the money for a down payment for a house. We don't want you to rent. We want you to buy a house. Uh, and they lent me the money um, to buy my house. And so that was a miracle in itself because I would have never been able to do that. And then someone else, uh, another miracle said, Hey, I want to give you uh, the money to actually pay for your closing costs, which, you know, those, uh, if you've bought a house, those are expensive. And so another miracle happened. And then, and then the house was needed a lot of work. And another miracle happens where I had some friends, uh, that, uh, said, Hey, we want to help you renovate your house. And they renovated the house pretty much like the whole house and did didn't ask for a dollar. And I was just like, man, I can't repay you for all this incredible uh, 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 things that you're doing for me. I mean, it was miracle on miracle on miracle. And I have to say that I love my house. I love my house. I love my house. I clean my house. I decorate my house. I take care of my house. I think about my house. I invest in my house. I'm passionate about my house. I am devoted to my home. When I'm away, I just want to go home. When I'm away, I just want to go home. I love my bed. I love my couch. I love my fridge. I love my stove. I love my kitchen. Like, my life is there. My kids' lives are there. It's where I bring back Everything. It's where I go home and bring back everything, right? My paycheck comes back home. My resources come back home. It's where I lay my head. It's where I'm fed and rest and refresh and gain peace. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to trick me to come home. I don't need a flyer. I don't need a special event. I don't need anything like that to come home. Why? Because I love to be home. And I'm not kidding. When I drive home, I, I live right off a highway. Um, and there's this kind of like this overpass thing. And I know with intense seconds I'm at my exit and, and I'm not this is not even a joke when I'm driving and I'm past this exit I, this peace yes. comes over my my head like it's like a blanket and I just feel like oh I'm home this is amazing it's my home it's my home it's it, it's like like right Christmas is coming up so uh what, what's the the quote from home alone it's my house I, I gotta defend it like it's my home it's not a home it's not the home it's my home it's personal it's mine it's mine uh, my home is where my heart is it's my home in the same way I love my house I love God's house I love this church 
I love this house. My heart is here. I have a heart for this house. The question is today, do we have a heart for this house? Do we have a divine passion for this house? If not, that's okay. We can be honest. I'm praying by the end of this, uh, end of this that we all do. Uh, and I want all of us all in. All of us all in because it's going to take everything we've got. I want to challenge us, especially those that call Saints Church their home. Are we all in? Are we locked in? Are we committed? Are we devoted? Are we motivated? Are we dedicated? Is our heart for this house in Exodus uh, chapter 36. We're going to read some verses. Uh, I'm going to stop in the middle and it says, so Bezalel, a holy ab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord commanded. So uh, God had given Moses special instructions on how to build the house of God, materials, measurements, all of it. Uh, then Moses summoned Bezalel and Holiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. Twofold. Those that God had given the ability to do the work and, and those who were willing come and do the work and those that were willing, meaning that there were those that had God-given abilities but were not willing. Yikes. I believe that we have some incredibly talented, amazing people sitting in this church or online, uh, and I believe that you have God-given abilities, whether it's to sing, whether it's to play an instrument, whether it's to be a host, whether it's to be with the kids, uh, whether it's to do production, whether it's to pray. I believe you have God-given abilities, uh, and, and I'm say, I, I want to say, man, God, I, I thank you for the abilities, but also I, I want to be willing yes. to do the work. Or we're willing to pour it out in God's house. Uh, they received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people, listen to all these words, continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So they brought their offerings to build the house. But it wasn't just a one-time thing. It, it, it wasn't like, I met my requirement. This is the lowest expectation. Uh, morning after morning, day after day, they willingly came back to God's house to bring free will offerings over and above. Free will, not expected, not even asked to on their own. They were expensive. It cost the people. Uh, a free will uh, offering is a true indicator of the condition of the giver's heart. One gives back out of love, respect, and gratitude because of what the Lord has done for them. Listen, Exodus 35 is the chapter right before talking about the same thing. It says the children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord. All the men and women whose hearts were willing, willing, will, hearts, it's a heart thing. Hearts were willing to bring material for all kinds of work which the Lord by the hand of Moses had commanded to be done. It is a heart thing. The result is, so, this is, this is hilarious. Uh, so, all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and went to Moses and said, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. They were ordered. They were restrained. They said, we have too much. Stop. Imagine that. Imagine getting to that point because the people were so willing, free will continued day after day, morning after morning, saying, we got to build this thing. We're all in. Peter just preached his big Pentecost Holy Spirit night message where 3,000 people get saved and baptized. The result, Acts 2.37 says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. It's a heart thing. And said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? What a question. Action should always be followed by the word of God. Verses 42 to 47, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. 
all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, again, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, hashtag community groups, and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily, those who were being saved. Acts 4, 32 through 35. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had with great power. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy persons among them from time to time. Those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need. This is not normal. This is big faith. This is big, bold Big, bold faith. This is big, bold faith. I'm not suggesting here anybody go sell your house. But for these, these disciples in the early church, the church became their home. The church became their family. They all had the same heart for the house. They were all in. Not some of them. All of them were all in. All of them were all in. They were devoted uh, to the building of the house. We are building his church, not four walls, but his church. Building a house is not just about building a, a regular house for your home. It's not just about the, the wood, but the lives that will live there, the memories that are created. Uh, it's a space where people rest and refresh and relax and eat and grow. Uh, you know, like if you, if you have whatever, uh, if you ever grew up in a house and, and your parents did this, where uh, they, would, they would mark every time you grew. They put that pencil mark every time there were measures to see the people in the home growing and maturing. Building the church is all about people and lives and families and seeing people restored and delivered and freed and being reconciled. Those in the house maturing and growing. But anyone that has a place to live knows it takes work. It takes giving. We work, we give, and so we build. If we don't work or give, we do not build. We stay where we are. I am happy that you are all here. I am. I'm not happy that we have thousands of Glendalians and Ridgewoodians and Bushwhackers <laughs> that are not here. So we build, we keep building. We keep reaching the lost, we keep growing believers, we keep transforming communities, which requires us to keep working, to keep giving. And so we keep supporting our house. We keep building this house. Listen, we've already planned 2024 with uh, guest speakers and, and, and uh, different events and men's events and women's events and marriage events and family events. Uh, and we've been going through all of this throughout the year and, and, and saying what's going what's gonna to help build uh, our church and grow the believers. And we've gone through all of this and, and, and it looks, 2024 looks amazing. Excited about it. We keep, we keep building uh, missions, yeah. We keep doing missions, not just here, but around the world. Eswatini, 460 children, they get fed twice a day. And we have preschool, we have the farm, and we have the chicken coop, and we have the life skills training going up. And we, have all the, we, we keep doing that. Legacy Center, uh, not just every Wednesday, we're out in uh, Maria Hernandez Park feeding people. Uh, every Thursday, we're, we're, we have our food pantry. Uh, this Thursday, like we mentioned, uh, we've got our big turkey giveaway for, for any family that comes and needs uh, some Thanksgiving meals. Uh, so we're going to give turkeys and chickens and bananas and hams. And we've got corn and string beans and I mean we, we, we've got we're expecting about 1200 families uh, right now so far we've got about 760 birds uh, and so I'm excited about that we're going to keep pushing and keep trying to uh, reach the goal but, but, but this is what we do we, we, keep, we keep going we keep building we, we keep making the phone calls we keep doing Christmas productions the Christmas production which you, we saw a video of it takes a lot of man hours it just doesn't happen in, in December uh, these, this team has been practicing since July and there's hours that get put into it and the sound team and production and, and, and the choir and like, like there's stuff that goes, it takes work. It does, just doesn't happen. It takes a lot of work, a lot of time and a lot of generosity. Imagine what we could accomplish if we all lived generously because we move at the speed of generosity. This is not about me. 
like I'm happy, I'm here, and so I'm done working and giving. If that's you, be done working and giving. But for the rest of us that say, no, 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 uh, we, we, there's more people outside than inside, and we've got to make sure we're building this house so that we have a place where these people can come and get freed and delivered and restored. And so we're going to continue to build the, chain, the church, and I, I want to continue to see lives change. And, and so we keep going. We, we, we go all in. Imagine. Imagine giving it all. Could you imagine what we would accomplish if we were giving it all? Listen, I'm not just talking church. I'm talking marriage. Imagine what we would accomplish in our marriage if we were giving it all. Imagine in our relationships, in our friendships, in our finances, in in cleaning our house, in our diet, at our job, in our careers, with our hobbies. Uh, We're giving it all, giving it all. Imagine what we'd accomplish if we were giving it all. In our dating, we are not giving it all. We're holding a few things back there. (laughs) Our spiritual lives, giving it all. Ministry, church, giving it all. We know when we're not. We know when we're holding back. when, when, When we're not giving it all. We know when we're being cheap. We know, God knows, and those in our lives know. We aren't fooling anyone. And when you think of the God that we serve, he gave it all. He went to the cross and died for us, and he held nothing back. And man, if that isn't enough to motivate us to give it all and not hold anything back. And and you say, well, why did he do that? Because he was devoted to us. He was committed to us. He's still committed to us. He's still devoted to us. He still gives us his all. And I want all of him, and he wants all of us. It only makes sense. Imagine, Imagine us singing a song. God, I want some of you. I want a little bit of you. I don't want that much, but just give me a little bit. It doesn't make sense. We sing, God, I want all of you. And God is saying to us, I want all of you. I don't want just some of you. I I don't want want a partial commitment. I don't want a halfway surrender. I want it all completely, wholeheartedly, unconditional surrender. He wants it all. Remember Hokey Pokey? You put your right arm in, and you put your right arm, you do the, and you, and then, and then the best part of the song is the end, right? Because you're doing, you're doing a little bit, a little bit, and then finally, what does it say? You put your whole self in, because that's what it's. God wants us to put our whole self. In. He wants our full devotion because that's what it's all about. A heart for the house starts with devotion. The disciples were devoted to each other. They did everything together. They were devoted. They made it a priority. This is the blueprint to building the house. The foundation is united devotion. And the byproduct, the church is built. People's lives are changed forever. Second Samuel chapter 7 talks about uh, David sees the Ark of the Covenant and, and the place that represented the presence of of God and it happened to be living inside this tent and David's over here living in this palace made of cedar and gold and he's like man this doesn't make sense and and I, I got to do something because because the the presence of God deserve he, it deserves to to be in a in a palace like I'm living in so so I want to build the house of God who's passionate about building the house of God but God said Because you had a grateful heart, because you had a thankful heart, because this was actually out of gratitude, because you wanted to build my house, I'm actually going to build your house. And he made David several promises. Like, if you take care of God's family, God will take care of your family. God is not a taker. God is a giver. Whatever we give to God, he will give back to us a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Luke 6, chapter 38. When we faithfully, uh, uh, when we give faithfully to him in our tithes and offerings, he promises to open up the windows of heaven upon our lives and pour out so much blessing that we won't even have room to contain it. Malachi 3.10. 
Try it. It works. Because God is not a man that he should lie. If he did lie, then he would cease being God because he would have no basis of righteousness. There is something very extraordinary about giving generously to God. I am perfectly aware that this subject has been abused and abused uh, by pastors around the world. uh, And they've taken advantage of God's children. But this does not negate the evidence of Scripture that God looks down with great favor on generous givers. In fact, Scripture makes it clear that when we give generously to God, He will give generously back to us because God loves generous givers. Generous giving comes out of a grateful heart, a thankful heart, and that's what touches the heart of God. David recognized that God had been extremely gracious to him, and God had elevated him from this unnoticed shepherd to this king living in this lavish palace. Out of gratitude, he felt to build a house for the ark of God, which was being housed in the tent at the time. And the decision was born out of pure thanksgiving to God, and God was deeply touched. So what comes out of this generous desire? There's several blessings. First, God promised to make David like the names of the greatest men on all the earth. The fulfillment is seen in that we constantly talk about David. Uh, we know he's the shepherd boy. We know he's the, uh, the, the one that killed Goliath. We, we know he's the one that was anointed before he became king and then become king and conquers uh, 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 all the surrounding areas of Israel. Like, like we know he's a man after God's own heart. And to this day, thousands of years later, we're still naming our children David. Anybody in here named David? Did you say no? I see one. Anybody else? I see down here. Pastor David. I saw one back there. Okay. Three. Four. I see you back there. Hmm. No. (laughs) That's an extension from this, literally from this promise. God is fulfilling his word. Second, God promises to subdue all his enemies before him. What a blessing. Peace on earth. Third, the Lord promised to build the house of David. This was more than a physical dwelling place. This referred to the legacy and posterity of David. The truth is, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers will labor in vain. Psalm 127.1. And I want God to build my house. So my focus is, I'm going to build his house. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and he will add all other things to you. Matthew 6, 33. He will build not just your physical home, but your relationships, your marriages, your career, your businesses, even your reputation long after you leave this earth. Fourth, God promised that his love will never depart from David's house. Man, don't we want generational blessings of God's love to follow our children? When we invest in building God's house, God will surprise us with incredible favor. God will watch over his word to perform it in our lives and our kids' lives and our kids' kids' lives and our kids' 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 lives. Come on, that, that's something to, to praise the Lord about. I want to give my all, reaching the lost, growing believers, transforming communities. And guess what? It's not cheap. 2 Samuel 24, 24, David says, I won't sacrifice anything that doesn't cost me. It's going to cost us. Time, talent, treasures, where we're going as a church, ladies and gentlemen, 2024 and beyond, it's going to cost us. Uh, Building is going to cost us. Reaching New York City is going to cost us. Growing believers is going to cost us. Transforming communities, it's going to cost us. Revival, it's going to cost us. Bringing the presence down, it's going to cost us. I'm all in. I'm fully devoted. My whole being with my whole heart, I want to give the gates of hell a heart attack. I want my heart attacking the gates of hell, and the gates of hell will not prevail uh, against this. The kingdom of darkness will not prevail because my heart is for his house. My heart is for God's kingdom, and it's all in. I'm not fighting half ready. I'm not fighting with one glove on. I am all in, ready to go, blow for blow, as long as it takes to reach the lost, grow believers, and transform communities. Singers, you could come. 
Acts chapter 13, verse 22. I'm going to close with this. Now, this is New Testament, but still talking about David. Thousands of years later, still talking about David. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testi- Could you imagine God testifying concerning, concerning you? What would he say? What would he say? Testified concerning David. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Another version says, he will do all my will. I pray he says this about us. I pray when God is testifying concerning us that he says they are men and women of God. They are men and women after my own heart. They have a heart for what God has a heart for. That they're willing to do everything that God wants us to do, giving everything God wants us to give, helping everyone God wants us to help, working as much as God wants us to work, building everything and everywhere God wants us to build. All of us doing all of his will. I want all of him and he wants all of us.